Hello, this is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT, and this is an introductory video for new players. Um, obviously, new DMs are welcome to watch as well if you're interested in how Foundry works, but this is very much aimed at those players who have suddenly been told we're moving to Foundry, we're going to be using Foundry VTT for our games, and as a player you need a little bit of orientation just so that you know what's going on, where to find some of those options, and basically how it works. Now you might be watching this video because your DMs has said, hey we're going to be using Foundry, go watch this video and get a bit of an introduction. Okay, so that's the audience this is aimed for. Uh, if you're already using Foundry, probably not a lot in here for you. But again, if you're a DM using Foundry and you've got new players, this might help them get started. All right, so what are we looking at? So first of all, when you're joining a game of Foundry, you will be given a link by your DM. So they are going to run a server version of Foundry, either on their own computer or hosted somewhere else. And as a player, you are going to be given a link that allows you to connect into that game. So just by putting the link into, you don't need to download any software. There's no cost for the player at all. Okay, 100% free, which is brilliant. So as a player, you're going to be given that link. You're going to slap it into your browser. Uh, it might look something like mine, um, but chances are, it won't it will be some kind of web address but you'll know that you're on the right track if you arrive at a screen that looks like this where we're going to be able to log in as you can see it says join game session now you may have a world description here as well just some notes that your dm has put for all of the players um, that are coming into this uh, there is also under game details here, some DMs may choose to use this to tell you when the next session is and use it a bit like a calendar. So you can check and go, oh, right, OK, yep, we're going to be playing again on Tuesday, whatever it might be. Uh, so that's an option that could be there. Um, you're going to want this top section. And there's a little drop down list here, which is going to list all of the people who have permission to log into this game. And you should find yourself on here grayed out ones you can't log in as okay so we can't log in as the game master but we can log in as a very imaginative player too so we're going to collect we're going to click on that to select it and if you've been provided with a password uh, you're going to use that so those passwords really will prevent players from choosing to log in as each other and just causing a bit of chaos important for more open public games where you don't know the other players but of course your dm will will manage that and let you know if there's any password required. So we're going to click join session and this is immediately going to take us into the game. Uh, ignore these red errors that are coming up here because I've already logged in to check this. Um, but we're going to get straight <clears throat> straight away we're going to get a configuration thing. It's going to tell us what our player name is um, and we have some options to be able to do a couple of things here. Now you don't really need to do anything here except you may want to change your default represented color. It doesn't matter. It really, honestly, it doesn't matter. Uh, and you may want to put in pro pronouns in here just so that other players know what your preference is. But importantly, player character here, you will see a list of all of the characters that you have access to. So it might be that you have access to three different characters and you're going to pick which one that you want to play in this particular game. Now, <clears throat> a lot of DMs will do like I do and will assign one player to their one character. So in this instance, we're just assigned to Hayley Longbreeze here. So we're going to choose Hayley as our character and we can save our player configuration. And we are now in Foundry. Now I've dumped us directly into a battle map. But you could end up at a scene that has just got images or a landing page or even a completely blank page. We'll come back to the battle map in a minute because I want to show you some of the interface bits. Because you all know what a battle map is, I'm sure. If you've played any role playing game before, you've got the idea you know, of what a map is and what tokens are. Um, but we will look at that in a minute. So very first of all, let's start at the top left. We can see that we have a box here that's called example. This tells you which scene you're currently in. We're currently in a scene called example. And you can see there's a couple of dots under here that will suggest which 
other players and game masters are also looking at the same scene. So we've got a we've got a, a pinkish G there to know that the game master is on this screen. And our remember we changed our color to blue from yellow. We've got blue player is also currently on this scene. Now you may see that there are further scene options up here. If your game master has elected to make those visible to you, you can probably, possibly, your GM will let you know, um, be able to change your scenes yourself and jump to other places. It might be there's a map scene and any time you want to, you can jump to that scene. And you can do that just by left clicking. Okay, so we've got a couple of icons on the left hand side here that allow us to do a few things. So let's zoom in on this battle map a little bit. To zoom all the way in, I'm using my mouse scroll wheel to do this. Um, and I can also use my arrow keys. I can't at the moment because the game's paused. Um, but I can use my arrow keys to move around. But if I hold down my right mouse button, I can pan my map around as well. So it's like, well, what is up there? Of course, I can zoom out to get a better view, but you'll get used to that. Just scrolling in and out, right mouse button to move around uh, and things like that. Left mouse button is going to try and select stuff. So I've not got my character selected at the moment, but if I draw around it, it will select it. Alternatively, I can just click directly on my icon. Now, in theory, you will know which icon is yours on the basis of it's got the image that you chose for your character on it. Um, but also you can't select other tokens that you don't own unless the game master has specifically said so. So even if there was a whole party of eight people here, just doing that is only going to select the ones that you're actually allowed to select. So either way, you can do that. Now, back to those options on the top left here. This top person icon is the token controls. So this, Haley is a token. Okay, so if you think about a, a more physical tabletop guy, you've got your miniatures, etc. Instead of miniatures, we've got tokens that represent exactly the same thing. So this is the token for my character. Now, each of these options that we click on produce this secondary menu here. So we've now got three more options under token. One of them is select, which is allowing me to do this drag and select tokens and click on my token. The next one is about selecting targets. So if I just on my other screen, I'm going to very quickly uh, drop in another copy of Haley over there. I can select because I'm the player who controls Haley. I can now actually select either of those. But with targeting on, if I click one, we see we've got the pointy arrows at the corner. So that is to that is to help identify which is the top what is the target for your attack for your spell. Uh, you might want to use it just to indicate this is the person I'm rolling my eyes at during role play or something like that. Now. It's a bit fiddly going all the way up to the top here. So also you can hover over any token and press the T key. You can possibly hear my keyboard now and that will toggle on the targeted or not targeted. You can also do things like hold down the shift key to target multiple other tokens if you want to. So if you were casting bless on the party, you need to pick three people. You could do it that way in order to show who you're doing. But again, your dungeon master will be able to help you with that or your game master. So this stuff, we're in D&D &D at the moment, but it applies to any game ran in Foundry, these core things we're looking at. So we can select tokens and we can choose to target. Now, common thing I do is like oh hang on a minute I'm on the wrong thing and I have to go back and now select my token and I can press T to stop targeting myself so the next one down here is a ruler you can see there's a nice little handy hint here it tells us that it's to measure distance so if you're not sure if that's in range of your spell or your bow or can I manage to run all the way up to the top of the stairs you can use that ruler and as you can see that is measuring that distance just by clicking and holding down the button and it's going to tell us how far things are away so that's really useful it's a core foundry thing that you can do so as a DM they've got a whole host of tools but you've only got access to the ones that you need 
So we can select tokens, we can target tokens, and we can measure stuff. Now this second one left hand, uh, the second one down on the left hand side. Uh, this says it's about measurement controls, but actually this is about drawing templates. Uh, I can't do that while the game's paused. Let me unpause the game. This is about drawing templates. So if I'm casting fireball, and you can see, if you can see the, uh, not only is the circle getting bigger, but it's telling me how big that is as well. So if I'm casting something that's a 30 foot radius, I can actually see if I put it in that place, how many people or what area that's going to cover. Now again, you don't need to worry too much about that. Your DM will possibly control some of those stuff but they may give you an option of doing those things yourself so again just left click wherever you want the origins to be and you can drag that out to create that circle template and if you've drawn the template you can hover over it press delete key and remove that template so there's other options here there is a cone template as well so we can start from there and we can start to draw that out. And again, look, it's giving us the distance that Haley is able to um, to use that particular whatever it is, spell, dragon breath, you know, uh, noxious stench, whatever it may be. And again, it's going to show us which other characters are or tokens are going to be covered by that spell if we cast it. OK, so we've got circle and we've got cone. And again, hover over, press delete. And of course, we've got a square one as well. So we can drag that from any uh, one. So it's not going to just with the square one, you think, oh, I want to do it there and expand out from it. Nope, it's going to pick one of the corners. But again, a 20 foot by 20 foot, that's what it's going to cover. And that's useful for things like entangle spells and stuff. Um, also, the final one is ray. So that's just, it's just a ray. It's a line. OK, so these are really useful for spells. Can I reach it? How many people are going to be covered by that spell, etc.? The DM absolutely can do that on your behalf. But of course, a lot of DMs, game masters would rather you had your own control over that. And the last one on the left here is journal notes. So your game master will have access to a journal. Um, that they can use to share information with you. So there isn't one set up by default on here, but the J game master might create that. And this just gets you to this gives you the ability to select particular journal notes. They might have put some on the map and things for you. But I tend to find that players don't really use that function um, from this menu. They mostly just stick with the token controls um, and. Don't touch them because there's other ways to do it. But that's fine. All right. So moving on from there then, let's go to the bottom left-hand corner. And you can see there's a little pop-up thing all the way down there in the corner that actually shows us who is currently logged in uh, and who is a, a player in this game. So we've got the game, the game master here with that little pinkish reddish icon. Uh, and then we've got player two that shows that player two, whatever their name is, whatever your name is as the player, uh, and then in brackets, the character that they're controlling. So we've got player two controlling Haley, and we've got their blue color, which again, we selected at the beginning and corresponds to this P for player, blue for Haley's player that we've got up here. So you, you can always see who's actually logged in, who are you waiting for, we're always waiting for Bob. Bob's late for the session again. So you can use that for that purpose, which is great. Now, hidden just next to that is a very small little folder icon. Now, if you hover over it, you can see it talks about um, macros. Now, there's a very good chance if you're very new to Foundry as a player, uh, your game master will t explain to you anything you need to know about this. And if they're relatively new to Foundry themselves, they just won't have any macros running. There's no macros in here by default. What a macro does is a shortcut, little bit of code that you don't need to worry about, but you click on the button and it does something for you. So it might be that they've got a very specific um, something that they want to have running and they might ask you to click on a macro. You're just going to go to there all of the macros you can access will be listed there and you're just going to click on the one that they want. 
my experience is that's quite uncommon for players to need to do that the game master may have well they may have dozens of macros to help them run the game but players generally are not interacting with macros in that way it tends to be hidden behind the scenes because you want to focus on playing the game and the experience and your storytelling next to that we have a shortcut bar macro shortcut bar bottom left here we can as the player drag all sorts of different things into that bar to give us a shortcut and you see that in a lot of video games um, you know we can put things on your hot bar that's basically what that is we're going to put a few things on the hot bar in a while but just be aware that we have more than one hot bar so you can see there's a tiny little number one here with some arrows and actually we can there's hot bar number five number four number three number two and back to number one so actually you've got access to 50 different shortcuts again it's very unlikely that as a player you would need that many but you might have a uh, a bar there that you're using for when in combat that's going to have some of your common activities on it you might have a bar for types of spells if your character is even a spell caster and there's a little lock icon here so you can lock that hot bar so you don't accidentally make changes you can still click and activate those but you're not accidentally going to delete one of your shortcuts okay so next we want to go all the way over to the other side and look at this right hand side here so let's start at the very top you will see that there's a group of different icons here and just hovering over them will tell you what they are we're starting on chat messages so in this column on the right hand side we will see any chat messages posted by the game master or the player but also the results of any dice rolls combat outcomes um, potentially images that are posted to chat as well so at the bottom we've got a box and we can just type in hello world and you can see that that has put that into there it says Haley long breeze has said hello world so it's going to tag the correct player who has put that into chat and that can be seen by all of the players which is which is great so there is a way for you to be able to potentially use that but of course it's more than likely you're going to actually be talking to each other um, you'll also notice that when I did that and this is an option that your game master will set it moved the screen to put the player who said it Haley, right at the center so if I move over here again just somewhere out the way And it didn't do it that time of course it didn't but uh, it will often it will pan to the person who is speaking to help make that really clear uh, and it, the first time it also put up a speech bubble let's see if it will do that again there we go so it's put up that speech bubble for us so it's a bit or more obvious which token which actor is saying the various things again those are options that your game master may or may not have switched on this is a default world default settings um, I haven't changed anything for this demo so lots of different things come in there you'll notice just above this chat box that we have a public role so if you click on that we've got a little drop down menu that we can change between that being a public role so all players and game master can see it a private role for just you and the game master a role to yourself or a blind uh, GM role Again, your GM will let you know when is appropriate to use those things but just to the left of that there's a little little dice icon that doesn't actually do anything okay it's not actually a rollable dice it's just talking about referencing this you can in the chat directly do dice rolls you can do a slash R to say do a roll and then type in the roll that you want I can do a 1d10 you heard a little clicky noise to represent dice being rolled and it says up here in the chat Haley Longbreeze 1d10 and she managed to roll a 1 so we can do a whole combination of those things 1d20 plus 3 
and again you get that little roll noise and we've got a 17 on this occasion and it says we rolled 1d20 plus 3 so it's really easy to do and we can expand that to see that we actually rolled a 14 and it added 3 to it okay so it's really useful um, function to be able to do those quick rolls there if we want to often we won't use that because there's other ways okay let's go back to the top here so the next one in from this is combat encounters. So if there is an ongoing battle, uh, all of the participants of that battle will be added to the combat tracker. Um, and this will show you the combat tracker. Now, in fairness, for most of the time, you'd want to stay on the chat because that's telling you the results of dice rolls and actually the important information. And the game master should be explaining whose go it is next. But you can use that if you want to. And little tip for you, if you right click on it, it will pop out. So you can have that open as well as the chat. Or you can right click to pop the chat out. So you can pop any of these out that you want. Next one, actors. This is going to show all of the actors, so characters, that you have access to. Either because you own them and can move them around, like Hayley, or that you have... Um, observer rights you can look at them even if you can't move them so you might find the rest of your players have their characters in here you can look but can't touch in other words you can't move their characters around but you can open their character sheets so talking of character sheets if i just click on Haley once left click on Haley in the actors tab it opens her character sheet we'll come back to character sheets in a bit so let's continue our journey across the top here. Uh, items, so any items, again, the DM has likely to got a whole bunch of items in there, but you're only gonna see ones that have specifically been shared with you. The next is the journal, I mentioned journal before, it might be it might have quests in it it might have information you find a, a specific clue they may have that added to the journal so any journal things you're allowed to see will be here and like actors you can just click on them and open it uh, the next one is roll tables so that's a random so like a random encounter table or a random treasure table often players don't have access to that but they might do so if you are uh if your sorcery magic is powered by wild magic, for example, you might have access to your own roll table for your wild magic consequences. The game master might choose that to give to you so that you would have that table here and you can roll on it for yourself to see what those results are. The next one is card stacks. So a lot of games don't use card stacks and certainly when I'm running Dungeons and Dragons games I don't use card stacks at all. But again, any card stacks available to you as a player will appear there. This next one is music and this is quite an important one for you to know. So there are sound effects and music and stuff that can play in the game. So if I take Hayley here and move her towards this pool... you can possibly just about hear some waterfall noises. Okay, so by turning up and down my volume, I can adjust those. Now, some things will be... I'm going to move her away again, just so that's not too loud for you. Some things will be set as music for the background. Some things will be environmental stuff. So things like waterfalls and rain sound, you would expect to be environmental. Um, whereas you might have combat music. Now it's quite difficult. Everybody's machine is different. Everybody's settings are different. It's quite difficult for the game master to get the volume right for all players. So really important as a player, knowing that you can come in here and adjust the volume for the music just for you so you can mute it as well to so say do you know what i hate the combat music playing just turn it right down okay um nobody's going to be offended by you doing that you know, unless they've spent hours composing it themselves and every player turns it off they might be a little offended but you can control your own volume there for the various different sounds that's really important to make sure you enjoy your experience uh, the next one up here is uh, the compendium. Now this gives access to certain things like racial traits, um, but you'll notice it's pretty much empty in a lot of cases. 
as a player, you are very unlikely to need access to the compendiums. Your game master will let you know if you need access to any of them, which ones, and they will make sure that you can access the ones that you need. And the final one, we've got the little cog item up here, accesses our game settings. So this allows you to do certain things like configure your settings, your controls, um, if there's any additional modules in and there is a tour management as well which gives you a little bit of a introduction um, some documentation uh, connection to the wiki pages and logging out of your game now obviously at the end of the session you want to log out of your game as a player just by closing your browser window will automatically disconnect you so you don't need to come here to log out that way it won't actually do any damage because you're only connecting as a player the reason why this is really useful apart from some help documentation is you can go into configure settings now as a player again what you've got access to while it looks like a lot is actually quite limited and i would suggest for most players they would never come in and touch this but as long as you're aware it's here so first of all we have two main categories core foundry settings so if you are trying to connect your audio and your video to a central server to join the game there are settings for that again if that is the case your game master will know how to do that and they will be able to take you through that themselves we, there's a combat tracker here which has some sound effects that come when you join combat and it's just basically allows you to change those so just know that they're there and you can change them yourself dice configuration well if you've got alternative sets of dice and things like that your game master will let you know you don't need to ever touch that um, language preference might be something that you need to look at preferred color scheme you've got an option between dark and light let's choose light looks exactly the same it will show up in some instances and not others uh, and then yeah so for me that on this scene that's not showing any difference but there's just a few other options you know those chat bubbles when we were typing in the text thing as a player you can choose to turn those off as a player you can say don't ever pan to the speaker so you can control that locally if you want to regardless of what the game master has initially set up uh, if you're finding your game is running sluggishly, you're trying to move around the map, you can come in here and look at the performance mode and change this to suit your machine that you're playing on. Uh, same as you can adjust your frame rates, you can change the size of fonts and things like that as well. So again, once you start playing, if you find something's not working, there's a good chance there is a setting that can make your experience slightly nicer. You will also have a whole bunch of settings that are connected with the game engine you're using. So the game you're playing, whether that's Pathfinder, Shadowrun, uh, Call of Cthulhu, uh, or in this case, Dungeons & Dragons, the 5th edition. And there's not an awful lot of options here. Again, the Game Master will have control over most of those. But just be aware that you can come in and tweak the way things work slightly just to make your life a bit easier. Now, let's get back to the action, if we like. We talked about the fact that we can go to our Actors tab, left-click to open up our character sheet. You can also double-click to open your character sheet. And here it is straight away. Now, again, this is Dungeons & Dragons. This is the default character sheet in Dungeons and Dragons. We've got our portrait there. Um, we've got our armor class showing on the left, our initiative, speed, our proficiency bonus, hit points, hit dice, etc. All of our skills in the middle, um, our saving throws and stuff. So all the bits that we kind of need instant access to are on this front page. But do note down the side there are tabs. So the top one is this details one. We can go to our inventory we can see our features of our class and race. We've got any spells we've got access to, uh, any effects that are currently on us, such as oh, we are deafened, we are frightened. And as you can see, as a player, 
I can put these on. You know, it's like, oh, well, I'm going to go for a lie down. You can set yourself to prone if you wanted to. Again, it's unusual for the player to need to do that. The DM generally will take care of all of that for you because GMs are nice like that. Um, but you can come in and see what you're affected by if you want to. And finally, a biography tab where we can fill in a lot of details about our character and, uh, and edit stuff if we want to. Now what's important for you to know about this character sheet is on the left we have a drop favourite. So let's say that Haley uses her mace a lot in combat. I can drag that, just hold down left click and drop it over here. Now it doesn't matter what tab I'm in, my mace is always available. And as you can see with a lot of things is you just hover over it and it gives you a bit more detail about all of these items. So Haley uses her mace quite a lot. We're going to stick that over there. But it might be that she also uses the bless spell quite a lot and cure wounds. So now these are here in favourites. Again, it doesn't matter that um, what other tab I'm on. They're here nice and easy. But importantly, I can also grab that mace and I can drag it all the way to the bottom of the screen and drop that in my hot bar down here. In fact, I can drag my bless from my favourites and my cure wounds. So now I don't even need to, if I target the other Haley uh, and I want to go and make my attack roll, I can click directly from here to make my attack roll to cast my spell, etc. I don't need to open the character sheet, which makes things a bit nicer. Now I just click that attack. What the heck happened? Nothing. Let me put us back to the chat window here. Now, something's happened. Because I clicked that attack with Mace, while having my player character, Haley selected, and somebody targeted, you can see that it's come up and said, Mace, and I've got two buttons here, to make an attack or to do damage. Well, I need to make an attack first, and I can click on that, and immediately this is going to ask me to make a dice roll. And it's not sure what I need to do here, so it's gonna ask me, is this going to be at advantage, at disadvantage, or a normal roll? So I can do my normal roll. There we go. And it has automatically looked at my character sheet and realized that this is not just a straight D20 roll. There's a plus five bonus. So that's going to be from my attributes and from my proficiency skill. So Haley's rolling with a plus five for a total of 14. Your Game Master is then going to inform you whether that hits or not, and then you can go to your damage button. So again, it's going to automatically pick up what damage it should be rolling based on the item you use to make the attack. So a mace, it's going to use mace damage, and now all it's asking is, was it normal damage or was it critical? And we can roll our normal damage. Once again, it's rolled 1d6, it's automatically added the 3 on here. And you can see Haley managed to roll a 1 plus a 3 for a total of 4 bludgeoning damage. Your game master then can apply that. So dice rolling is connected directly with casting these spells. I can click on a spell and it's going to ask me, oh, you're going to cast this at first level or second level? I'm going to cast it at first level, thank you. And it's automatically going to consume one of my spell slots, as it should because I'm casting a spell. And I can click that and again you can see it just brings up the chat thing and then it has the button to apply that healing. So that is your base navigation for Foundry VTT as a new player. The most important things you need to know is that you can adjust your sound, you can select your token, okay, you can target other things, uh, access your character sheet and use some of those shortcuts. So the last thing to mention um, is when we're moving our tokens is you can hold down the left button on your token and you can drag it to the new location and it will move. Okay, so nice and easy. But you can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard uh, to move around if you want to. And if you do two at a time, you can get it to go diagonally, etc. You can move around the place. So... Again, your Game Master will know this because they will be able to coach you through it. But just to get you started, get you an understanding of the environment that you're in, how things work. 
So the final thing to say is you may log into your game and find things work a little bit differently. This is base core foundry in D&D. Your game may be a different game system that might have some different quirks in the way it works or different mechanics and more importantly your game master may have added on additional modules that change the function of the way foundry works for you so it might change the look of your character sheet it might change the way that communications work automatically the chat bubbles are different it might change the way that when you click dice rolling it might not ask you for attack it may do that automatically so there may be lots of extra automation in there there may be functions where you right click on your character and you can light your own torch by clicking on this so as you can see just right clicking brings up a couple of menu options uh, including setting yourself some conditions and things don't worry about that your game master will explain to you how to apply things like conditions, how to do combat in their game world. But I just wanted to introduce you to those real basics. Most games, one of the first modules that um, your game master will add on is probably a dice rolling module. So that when you click things like your attack, you'll see dice roll across the screen. Um, so that it looks a bit nicer, you've got something visual to look at rather than just a cold number in the chat. But any questions, speak to your Game Master. They will know how to uh, get over any of those things to show you how to customise it further for their particular game. But this was just an introduction, just so that you know this is Foundry VTT. Those are the basic navigations that you need to know as a starting player and your Game Master can take it from here. Hope that's been useful. Leave a comment, leave a like, and I'll see you in another video.